Hey there, Internet. I am Bunny number... I have no idea. Whatever it says up there, I guess. This is my submission for the Trials of Idiosyncrasy. Uh, just a forewarning, I filmed most of this this morning, and a whole bunch of crap went down, culminating in my battery dying when I was just about done with the story, and I just now found a new battery. Uh, so it's just going to cut suddenly to me finishing the story and uh, that's it and it's going to be a really crappy cut because I just don't care alright uh, sorry about that some uh, dude just showed up and started fishing and was kind of being a dick about it so I'm just going to sit here in my car and read it It should be awesome. Like I was trying to say, is you have to bear with me. I was up all night working. And I'm super tired, but I'm a try hard and I'm going to push through it. And what I said before, uh, this fiction that I found, that I totally did not write, totally, swear, I, I promise, is called... What is it called? What did I decide to call it? Um, right, of puppets and sharp things, and this takes place in the Everyman hybrid universe. So, my apologies, apologies to those who are involved. The puppet sat in the darkness and thought of his master. It had been a few weeks since he had seen his master, and by the looks of the that the bearded one gave him, the puppet knew his master wasn't coming back. The bearded one had claimed him from his master's things and kept him in his car. But from either grief or guilt, the puppet had been tossed into the rear of the car to be forgotten. One way or the other, the puppet had known he would be tossed aside. He had known for a while now. Ever since that day when she ruined it all. She. The puppet hated the long-haired one with a passion. There was no one to blame for his master's appearance but her. He cursed her name aloud as he thought about that day. That day when his master told her that he wasn't real. The puppet knew what he meant. The puppet knew he, he was never the dog his master lost. But the puppet knew he was real. The puppet cursed the long-haired one again, louder. And from the corner of the car, there came a voice. I hate her too, my friend. The puppet, stunned to hear from another, cried out, You hate the long-haired one? Yes. She stole my master from me. The puppet could now see that the voice was coming from a large blade. The puppet listened as the blade relayed his sad tale. The machete, as he called himself, served as an acquaintance of the puppet's master. Well, served an acquaintance of the puppet's master, the short one. The machete had countless adventures with the short one. It was an exciting life. But then the long-haired one showed up, and the short one began to spend all his time with her. And then, one sad, sad day, the short one abandoned the machete here in the bearded one's car. The machete had only seen his master a few times since. The puppet and the blade soon became fast friends. At first, all they could talk about was their mutual hatred of the long-haired one. But then they began to tell each other stories of the adventures they had with their mutual masters. The puppet talked about all the walks and jam sessions he shared with his master, and the machete often talked about the hunts he'd go on with the short one. The puppet's favorite tale was of the last time the blade was used by the short-haired short -haired, short one. The puppet was engrossed by the visual image the machete painted. The puppet imagined the sound of the blade the sound the blade must have made when it struck the deer, and how 
I must have shimmered with blood. It excited the puppet. And just as quickly as the two had become friends, they then became something more. They shared their innermost desires. They talked of passions and love. The bond between them grew and blossomed, and they uttered their darkest secrets. But one day the machete cried out, My dearest and sweetest of friends, I must beg you for your forgiveness. The puppet, surprised, cried back, My lovely friend, what possible slight against me could have you perpetrated? I know all there is to know about you. Alas, the blade replied, You know all but save one thing, and this one thing has weighed my heart heavy. I was there when your master disappeared. The puppet, stunned, said nothing. I was here in the back of the car, while your master and the bearded one were in the front. I could not see them, but I could hear. I heard them talking and laughing. And then I heard screaming. And then nothing. So I must beg your forgiveness, my truest of friends. I was there when your master disappeared, and I was not able to save him. The puppet was silent for a very long time. When he finally spoke, he spoke with a quiet, grave voice. I am very sad to hear this, my dear friend. I know now how heavy of a burden you have carried. But beyond my sadness, I must tell you that I am glad that you have revealed this final truth to me. And while I am ultimately sad, my love for you has never been stronger, my dear, misfortunate friend. The blade made an audible sigh. I cannot tell you how relieved I am to hear this, my friend. And then, amazingly, the puppet turned towards the blade. I, too, have kept my secrets, my friend. I unveil one to you now. I come to you now, my friend. Finally, we shall embrace. The machete gasped as the puppet amazingly slowly began crawling towards him. When the puppet finally, when the puppet finally reached him, he wrapped his cloth, on, on, ugh, cloth arms around the sharp blade. The blade could feel the strands of fiber being cut. The blade cried out, Not so hard, my friend. I fear for your safety. The puppet blandly replied, It's too late for that, as he tightened his embrace. The puppet's embrace was so firm, but so soft. The blade had never felt such warmth. But then it turned into something else. Where it was warm, it became heat, an unbearable heat, and pain soon began. The puppet spoke quietly. I am so sorry for this, my friend. But no one can know what happened. No one can know what I did. I made a promise. And then black ooze began to pour from every pore of the puppet, covering the blade completely. The machete began screaming in pain. The puppet reflected on the last time he heard screaming like this. He was in his master's pocket, as always, when the bearded one picked them up. The puppet had listened to them talk. He had gasped, when the conversation started sounding just like the one his master had with the long-haired one. The puppet could not abide this. He crawled out of his master's pocket. This naturally alarmed both the master and the bearded one, and they began screaming. And the bearded one fled the car. His master was trying to get out of his seatbelt when his puppet lovingly embraced him. They both screamed and the bearded one fled the car. The puppet's master was trying to get out of a seatbelt when the puppet embraced him. The puppet had only meant to show him how much he loved him. But then the black stuff came. 
and then the screams, and then silence. For all practical purposes, his master was gone. There was just, all that remained was just a few lumps of flesh and black stuff on the seat. The puppet wept. And that's when the faith, the faceless one arrived. He cleaned up the mess, and then he cleaned the bearded one's mind. And then he spoke to the puppet. He told the puppet that there would be a time when his master would come back. This time would never come if he told anyone about this. And so, he told no one about this. The puppet kept his promise. His friend the machete was now silent. When the puppet moved away, there was only a rusty lump of metal left. And the puppet sat, the puppet sat back and waited for his master. Idiosyncrasy made me do it.